a federal judge sentenced insurance executive Greg Lindbergh to seven years and three months in prison for attempting to bribe a state insurance commissioner with campaign contributions to secure a more favorable regulatory treatment for his insurers. Mr. Lindbergh's prison sentence is among the stiffest for white-collar defendants in recent years. The sentence for Mr. Lindbergh, handed down by federal judge Max Cogburn Jr., was about half the 14 years sought by prosecutors. Federal sentencing guidelines had called for Mr. Lindbergh to be jailed for 12 and a half to 15 years. His lawyers have said they plan to appeal, arguing that Mr. Lindbergh's alleged bribery wasn't seeking an official act by the insurance commissioner which is required for conviction under U.S. Supreme Court decisions. The North Carolina Commissioner, Mike Causey, was cooperating with federal officials and secretly recorded conversations with Mr. Lindbergh and his co-conspirators. The judge rejected a bid by Mr. Lindbergh's attorneys to keep their client free while he pursues an appeal, ordering him to report to prison when directed by prison officials. Brandon McCarthy, an attorney for Mr. Lindbergh, said it was deeply disappointing that his client had been penalized as a result of unfounded allegations. No matter how you slice it, a political contribution is not a crime. Seeking fair regulation is not a crime. Mr. Lindbergh remains under federal investigation for other issues related to his business empire and is a defendant in a number of civil lawsuits in which plaintiffs collectively are seeking hundreds of millions of dollars, according to court filings and people familiar with the matter. Among those is a suit filed by Universal Life Insurance Co., seeking damages of $524 million. The Puerto Rico insurer won an arbitration award in June of that amount against one of Mr. Lindbergh's insurers, and says Mr. Lindbergh refused to honor a 2017 personal guarantee to backstop the agreement. A federal judge has affirmed the $524 million arbitration award. A spokesman for Mr. Lindbergh declined to comment on the personal guarantee but said the insurer has ample assets to cover the award. The Lindbergh lawyer said he intends to appeal. Mr. Lindbergh, a graduate of Yale University, was an entrepreneur with a mid-sized conglomerate in Durham, North Carolina, when he decided to move into insurance back in 2014 with an unorthodox strategy. He bought a number of small life insurers, some moribund and lend at least $2 billion of their assets to entities he controlled, the Wall Street Journal reported last year. Insurance regulators generally limit such related party investment by insurers to protect policyholders, but Mr. Lindbergh said the loans would deliver higher yields than conventional bonds to the insurers, and regulators in North Carolina initially allowed the strategy, the journal reported. Mr. Lindbergh used the loans to acquire dozens of small companies. He also began living a more lavish lifestyle, buying several luxury homes, a private jet and a 214-foot yacht. His claimed his net worth soared to $1.7 billion at the end of 2017, up five-fold from four years earlier. Mr. Lindbergh has said the loans were appropriate and that no insurance money was used to finance his lifestyle. After a new North Carolina insurance commissioner, Mr. Causey, was elected and took office in 2017. Regulators began pushing for conventional bond investments. Claiming the shift was unfair, Mr. Lindbergh tried to persuade Mr. Causey to replace the official overseeing his insurers, and offered campaign donations of as much as $2 million funneled through the state's Republican Party, according to evidence presented at the criminal trial. Unknown to Mr. Lindbergh, the insurance commissioner had gone to federal officials after becoming concerned about the Lindbergh insurers, and was recording many of his meetings with the executive. In arguing for a stiff sentence, prosecutors said Mr. Lindbergh was unrepentant, pointing to the executive's campaign against a witness, Mr. Causey. After the trial ended in March, Mr. Lindbergh filed a suit against the commissioner, alleging defamation and abuse of power, and has claimed in public statements that Mr. Causey lied and targeted him for political reasons. Those accusations, prosecutors said, were meritless. Lindbergh and his accomplices, driven by greed, devised an extensive political bribery scam to illegally funnel millions of dollars to an elected official for the benefit of Lindbergh's business interests, said Charlotte U.S. Attorney Andrew Murray, whose office prosecuted the case, in a statement Wednesday. The severity of their brazen conduct is reflected in the court's sentence. Mr. Causey declined to comment. His lawyers have moved to dismiss the suit, saying, among other things, that Mr. Causey acted legitimately in his official capacity. Since June 2019, 
three of the insurers have been in a form of receivership akin to reorganization under federal bankruptcy law, and state officials are continuing to try to determine the values of the debt the companies are owed by Mr. Lindbergh's private entities. A state judge has appointed a panel to oversee some of those private entities' moves. Mr. Lindbergh, in a July press release, said his private companies had record operating results and forecast $1.4 billion in revenue for 2020. He said a valuation firm found that the conglomerate, grouped under the name Global Growth, had a net worth of $860 million to $1.5 billion, meaning that loans from our affiliated insurers to global growth companies are very well secured. Federal authorities have been engaged in an ongoing parallel investigation involving Mr. Lindbergh's business structure, a prosecutor said in an August 2019 pretrial hearing in the bribery case. That criminal probe is continuing. A person familiar with the matter said. As part of that investigation, Federal Bureau of Investigation agents have interviewed people involved in a sprawling security operation run by Mr. Lindbergh, according to people familiar with the matter. The executive paid dozens of security operatives to tell women that he was either dating or interested in, taking surreptitious photos and sometimes putting GPS trackers on their vehicles, the journal reported last year citing former security staffers and copies of internal reports produced by those operatives. The Lindbergh spokesman has said the surveillance activities were background checks to help Mr. Lindbergh avoid entering a long-term relationship with anyone who was breaking the law, using illegal drugs, associating with less than reputable people or other such activity. One of the women was referred to in the journal article as a former Miss Texas International. The woman, Courtney Keller, recently posted a TikTok video using the hashtag dating nightmares, discussing her relationship with an unidentified man who she said had a private jet and yacht. She said in the video that she heard about alleged extensive surveillance of her in the course of being questioned by the FBI, and that now the man is going to jail for a very long time. Miss Keller, who took down the TikTok video Wednesday after being contacted by the journal, declined to comment. The Lindbergh spokesman said, we believe Miss Keller's TikTok video speaks volumes about her credibility, 